global illumination uh, is called holy grail in computer graphics because it's very hard to achieve and uh, there's been many decades of people struggling to, to make it look real and to run fast on computers and uh, what it does it's about algorithm that calculates how light, light spreads in the real world um, so in computer graphics uh, we've got a way to calculate the direct lighting. So if there is like sun that casts light, uh, it goes into a specific surface. So we can calculate how much light goes to that surface, whether it's in a shadow or not. And shadow can be also semi-transparent with some penumbra effects. Uh, so we can calculate that kind, kind of easily and very fast. But the problem is that there's light that comes on this, that surface and it's being reflected, it goes over like it's it's bouncing through the scene and if there are objects uh, nearby it might bounce on on them and also there's effect of coral bleeding because if you if you take a, a very bright colorful object like red box and put it in a full sunlight it's gonna reflect this red light over the uh, surroundings and that basically that's that's how the global illumination works uh, it illuminates globally the light from the objects into each other of course, each, each uh, bounce of the light reduces the energy of it because it's being partially uh, uh, taken by this object surface. Uh, so uh, it fades gradually. And the problem of the, uh, of the computer graphics of this algorithm is how to implement it. It's a very hard challenge because the light is uh, spreading very fast. Um, it's hard to estimate it uh, because the light can come from every direction to the every pixel. Uh, on a screen and that's why it's been always a struggle for computer graphics engineers uh, to implement it efficiently um, for many decades i think the the easiest way was to use some path tracing or ray tracing technology uh, offline and compute the light maps light maps are textures placed on object surfaces we've already calculated gi uh, for the scene so then when the player plays the game they already have lighting cooked in and they just need to calculate, for example, the direct lighting or just dynamic object lighting. So this was great because we can offline compile, uh, co compile all the photons going through the scene and just, just output ready to use textures. Um, and the game performance is, uh, is good. But the problem is, is it doesn't work for the dynamic scenes um, because we, we calculate this offline. So for dynamic scenes, uh, there, there's been many decades of different algorithms, different way of calculating the light. Uh, most commonly used uh, as a way of doing some kind of light probes. Uh, and light probe is just one point in a space uh, for which we calculate the GI. Let's say we have uh, a small sphere uh, in the middle of the room and we calculate how much light comes to the sphere exactly and how, it, how the scene looks from, from the point of view of that sphere. And if we calculate uh, this, we could interpolate the, the value of this uh, lighting on that sphere into the object surfaces in that room. And this allows us to estimate the GI on object surfaces a little. And um, since we don't have to calculate this for every pixel, and uh, we can keep those light probes in a kind of optimized structure with optimized algorithms going over them, uh, this allows to, to do semi-dynamic or fully dynamic GI uh, in games. It's been kind of a common way of implementing GI. For example, the game I mentioned before, Witcher 3, used a similar technique to, to implement dynamic D GI, especially when the time of the day changes. There were basically probes in a world that, that calculate the lighting for themselves and spread this light information into the pixels. The problem with this technique is uh, it's not accurate. It just calculates the light for a specific uh, objects in space, or places in space. Whereas the, the over the time, the games are growing, the, the worlds are more complex. Um, the gamers uh, want to play the games that are more realistic, the games uh, that, that the lighting is better, like spreads more naturally, more realistic with higher fidelity. Uh, so that's why, um, there's constant need to, to tackle uh, solutions for, for this problem. And that's how the Unreal Engine 5, as you mentioned, comes out a few years back uh, with a custom GI solution called Lumen. Um, 
and it changed the world basically from that point on because uh, they, they invented lots of stuff. Uh, they used lots of papers, uh, public research papers uh, that we already uh, released before, but they managed to connect lots of dots together. Uh, specifically, they, uh, they used uh, sign distance fields to perform uh, software ray tracing and uh, they, they implemented lots of denoising in a screen space to, to reduce the noisiness of the, of the ray tracing. Uh, because under the hood, when we have this light probe in a space, uh, I said, um, the way to, to calculate the lighting that comes to that probe, the easiest way is to just ray trace through the scene. You shoot the ray uh, into the surroundings and check if it's hitting something. If it's hitting a material, um, like for example, for that uh, example with the red block box, and there might be a probe nearby this, and if one ray from that probe hits the red box, it gives the information that hey, nearby the probe on the like right side there is red box, red pixel, it's pretty bright, so we have to account for the lighting information. Um, and uh, recently, there there's been new hardware ray tracing coming to GPUs. Uh, which is a very efficient way to ray trace through the triangle scene and get this information of that color of the pixel that we're hitting on. Uh, but the problem is it's not supported on every hardware, only on the newest GPUs. And also, even though it's very fast, it's not that fast to be used everywhere. Um, what I mean, uh, we, we cannot use only ray tracing. We, we have very uh, strict budget am amount how many rays we can shoot through the one frame of the of the rendering update. Uh, so that's why. How, how uh, is it? How is it called? Like, how can you check whether your graphics card supports this? Um, Nvidia called it RTX. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Similar feature call uh, came out on a different GPUs, and it's supported on also consoles. Okay, but it, uh, you're talking about like a proper ray tracing support, not like a, a subset of it. Uh, with like a yes. special technology. So ju just the ray tracing support for the, yes. for the graphics card. And okay. the, the ray tracing support, the ray tracing API allows us to, to, to trace through the scene and get this information. Like if there is probe, uh, there might be a red box nearby it. So we, we can get information that on that way there, there is a red box. So if there is a GPU that doesn't support it, or um, maybe there's a different way to ray trace through the scene that doesn't cost that, that much. And that's how Epic used uh, in Unreal Engine 5, uh, sign distance fields. Sign distance field is, um, is a way of representing the objects, 3D objects uh, usually, uh, but also works for 2D um, with a uniform grid um, of, of pixels. And in each pixel, we store the, the information about the distance to the closest surface. The distance can be negative if we are inside the object, so that's why it's signed distance field. Uh, and using this, um, this data, we can efficiently trace for this field because we at every pixel, we know the distance to the closest surface. So if we move this distance uh, for the ray, we know that we won't hit surface um, or at least maybe on the end of the ray. So that's how we can very quickly ray trace for that surface. Um, and they, they added the ability to calculate the distance fields before in Unreal Engine 4, but they use it for Lumen to ray trace in the world. Uh, of course, there's lots of technical challenges, like how to, we can ray trace to the scene, but what's the color of that surface we hit on? And uh, how to store this efficiently, because there can be thousands of objects on a scene and we have to combine them somehow in one ray tracing API. Uh, but, uh, with this system in place, um, they, they could do ray tracing for the, for the world uh, to calculate the, the lighting uh, coming into the, the probes. Uh, so after, after Unreal Engine released this feature, uh, we already were before interested in doing some real-time GI for the flux because we already had light mobs baking, but we didn't have um, the real-time GI so solution. Um, so this was good idea for us that, that hey, there's, there's a way to doing uh, GI with ray tracing, but without hardware ray tracing um, with, with distance fields. And that was first idea. And the second idea was um, at that time, uh, NVIDIA released 
uh, the DGI algorithm. Um, and uh, the DGI is basically a dynamic diffuse global illumination. Uh, it's a public uh, paper, uh, scientific paper with uh, good code examples and a great presentation. Um, but it's made by some um, scientists at NVIDIA. And this algorithm um, basically uses a uniform grid of peaks of probes around the camera. And they calculate global illumination for each of those probes. They calculate also the distance to the surfaces nearby. And they can efficiently uh, calculate the per pixel lighting from those probes. Uh, so you have a pointer on the camera, uh, like close to the camera? Yes, uh, yes, in a, in a very close uh, okay. surroundings. Okay, and you shoot rays through those points. And then yes. w w what is the benefit of having those points? Uh, so. Uh, you have those automatically placed probes around the camera yeah. in front of it, uh, usually nearby the object surfaces, and you uh, perform the ray tracing from those points in space um, around the, the probe to calculate the, the lighting it sees. Okay. So we, we can estimate that, hey, this is probe nearby this red box, which is in a light. So we know that there's lots of red light coming to that probe from that direction. So uh, if we have this uh, grid uniform enough and like uh, dense enough, uh, then nearby pixels uh, that are on a screen nearby those, those probes can interpolate the results of those probes. So it's using something similar I told you before, except uh, this the DGI algorithm used a small depth buffer for those probes. Very low resolution um, depth information, how the pixels are close to that probe. And this allows to reject the, the lighting uh, influence from the, the pixels are, that are behind the probe. Because the common problem of the, the probe solution is that uh, when you have indoor and outdoor environment, like open world game, um, when the, the probe is inside the, the building and the another is outside, there's area in between those two probes that is using basically linear interpolation to calculate the lighting values. But the problem is that might be a wall in between. Uh, and somewhere in between there might be light leaking from inside to outside and uh, from outside to inside. And to solve this problem, there have been many different ways, uh, but none was so successful as a DDGI, uh, because if we store the depth information in that probe, very, very low, low resolution, uh, we can reject the probe lighting information if it's not visible from the pixel. And that helps us to basically reject the lighting from outside probe when we are rendering the pixels inside the building and use just the, uh, the values from, from the nearby probes that are visible to that pixel. Yeah, I discussed this I discussed this issue with uh, an artist, artist, environmental artist, Tomislav from Crow Team, when working on Tarlos Principle 2, like when switching from, from an outside light with Lumen, Unreal Engine 5, into the labs, which was the indoors environment, and how it how it was very difficult if somebody stayed on the in the middle and looked outside and inside. There were lots of graphical issues with that, with light. Yes, exactly. So uh, in Flux, we we took this uh, public NVIDIA paper. Yeah. Uh, we studied it very, uh, very intensively. And um, we because the, the, the algorithm from NVIDIA used hardware ray tracing, of course, on NVIDIA GPUs to promote their, their GPUs and to show that it's a pretty nice solution. Uh, but we wanted to have a more open uh, tag for any GPU. Uh, without any hardware ray tracing. And that's how we decided to, let's implement something similar with distance fields. It's already very common uh, using distance fields in computer graphics, even for the 2D font rendering. Uh, instead of rasterizing font uh, characters into pixels, you can rasterize them into the distance field to have the distance to the, uh, to the font uh, character um, area, and then rasterize it uh, in higher resolution. So uh, we implemented on uh, SDF, uh, so science distance field rasterizer uh, on data storage and way to build the global distance field for a whole scene from objects uh, inside it. Then we implemented our own Atlas cache, uh, which is 
way of rendering object surfaces into the atlas and projected them on, on, a, on this global distance field. And then with this custom tech, we were able to ray trace for this scene on any GPU and the, get this information of the light coming in to that probes. Um, it took a few months. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, after that, we released a public uh, tech demo on a Steam. It's available to download for free. And you can uh, play it on uh, on your computer. Uh, everyone can, can test it and check it. Uh, it's a high fidelity um, office space uh, scene with dynamic lighting where time of the day can change and the different lighting scenario uh, can can be can help visualize how how GI works in Flux and it's pretty fast. And you do this after work, like <laughs> yeah, 